Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. So this episode is going to be a little bit shorter than a normal one because I have now returned to university so I don't have as much time to pour into these episodes anymore. I have also started up a modded Minecraft series on my second channel, Kanas B. If you want to go check that out, a link will be in the description and I'll put a card up too because why not? Anyway, in the last episode we went to Gateway and we gathered a whole load of science and since then I did actually go back and I rescaled my antenna to three and a half times using just the stock engine, not stock engine, stock configs for antenna and that meant that I was able to transmit the rest of the data back that I didn't receive when I was over there. That was fabulous and with a few hops around those moons we gained an additional two and a half thousand science which I promptly spent at the beginning of this episode. And the Kerbals on road, with all of that data from Gateway, somehow they discovered that slapping a pair of wings onto a vessel and moving it quite fast horizontally, well, we're able to generate lift. That's right, the Kerbals have finally discovered that planes are a thing. So for the vast majority of this episode, what we are going to be working on will be some space planes. By the end of the episode, I want to have a reusable pl space plane system, even if I can get my words out, that will be able to ferry crew to and from low road orbit. And ideally, it will be fully reusable, so we will have a reusable first stage booster as well. At least that was my intentions at the beginning of filming all of this stuff. Anyway, we have designed our first plane. As you can see, there are no chemical rockets, there are no engines that will get us space bound. No, we are just testing aerodynamics out to begin with. And to be honest, I did want to play around a little bit with the OPT mod because it is a new mod that I have now downloaded and installed for this series because it gives you futuristic -y looking space plane parts, which do look really awesome. Like that they are incredibly, incredibly well put together. And I am, <laughs> I was having a lot of fun messing around with planes. Anyway, this thing doesn't fly particularly well. We managed to get a little bit of science and just test out the basics of aerodynamics. We do attempt a runway landing and we do land on the runway, although we do overshoot quite a little bit because I was a little bit of a donut and forgot to turn the throttle down until quite late. But we do come to a complete stop eventually. And with that, and with some of the probes that I've got hanging around the road system, the temper system, I was able to pick up a little bit more science, which unlocked us heavy aerodynamics. And with that technode unlocked, well, I get a lot more space plane parts, which of course, I am going to jump straight back into the space plane hangar and use. I don't usually use space plane parts <laughs> all that frequently. I'm not really known for building planes, and it's something that I do kind of want to try and get into a little bit more because I have had quite a lot of fun building planes recently, especially in RO and RP1 and in this series. Yeah, it's, it's something I've never done, but I have, I have discovered the joys of making them. So expect a few more. Ex don't expect them to be very good, <laughs> at least not for a little while, because I do need to have a little bit of practice. But like I said earlier on, by the end of the episode, hopefully we should have some sort of space plane that does work. Anyway, what we're going to be doing for this one is upgrading the plane a little bit. We weren't even able to go supersonic with the last design. So that's what I want to be able to do with this design and test how, how aerodynamics work once we break the sound barrier. So in order to do this, we have upgraded the intakes. Originally, we were just using the intakes on the OPT part. I don't know how efficient they are at supersonic speeds, but these RAM intakes that we have should be a lot better once we break the sound barrier. And of course, we have also placed two rather large chunky engines on the back, and that should give us more than enough thrust to basically get this plane supersonic. At least that's what I'm hoping. And we're just fiddling around with the landing gear now, trying to place them relatively close to the center of mass, but not too not too close to the behind of them so that the plane tips over as soon as we launch it on the launch pad, because that would be terrible. I have done that several times, do not worry. We're gonna name this the RPSA Cobra, and with that, we're gonna get our crew out, and we are going to fly this. And we have Ziggy Kerman III and Rags Kerman. So these are basically our two test pilots for this episode. I didn't wanna use anyone new from the Kerbal application section, because we are just gonna be doing flights around road. We're not going to anywhere interesting, nowhere new and exciting. So I felt like 
I want to save those new applicants for something a little bit more special. And we should be doing that in the next episode. I have already kind of filmed a fair amount for the next episode and it will be building stuff in space, orbital construction. And I'm very looking forward to being able to do that. Although there was a little bit of a panic moment that I had where it wasn't working due to Principia, but I have got that all sorted. And I guess I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next episode. So this plane, the Cobra, doesn't particularly fly very well. <laughs> Nothing seems to fly very well, except for when it does get supersonic. As soon as we start going fast, the stability of this plane does really pick up. As we can see now, we're not wobbling anywhere near as much as we were. We're, we're pretty much straight and narrow and we're not going anywhere. And we actually get to about Mach 2. And then I decide, well, now that we're going quite fast, what I wanna do is I wanna pitch up a little bit and see if we can gain a little bit of altitude with this craft as well. Cause we do want to see if we can eventually work on single stage to orbit designs. And this is obviously something that you do need to do for those kind of designs. Get a lot of speed when you're low, low down, pitch up, then switch to a more conventional vacuum engine once basically all of your air runs out. And that's not something that we are going to be doing in this episode, at least. The space plane that I will design later on is going to be launched on top of a more conventional rocket due to the fact that obviously we are playing with a rescaled road system and that means we do need 6,000 meters per second of delta v to get to orbit. That is a crazy amount of delta v to try and build an SSTO with the parts that I have unlocked at the moment. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to need a lot better technology before we can do that. But that is something as well with the OPT mod that hopefully will give me. We will get some very, very nice SSTO engines. And I do believe I get some nice nuclear SSTO engines at some point as well. <laughs> Although I'm not sure how much I'm going to use them because we don't really want to be blasting all of the Kerbals on road with, with nuclear fallout. That would be a little bit, I can't think of the word, inconsiderate, maybe, unethical, bad, <laughs> just generally bad. Yeah, no, it, it wouldn't be good for the Kerbals on road. Although that being said, if we look around road, I mean, there's no structures anywhere. It, it's, it's pretty barren. And that's, you could say that with stock KSP as well. I actually saw, I think KSP, the actual game, did a post on Reddit or Facebook or one of the social media sites the other day. And it asked, what is the strangest thing about Kerbin? And my instant thought was, well, you've got a spacefaring civilization on the planet but the only single structure on the entire planet is the space centers at the three separate space centers or anything. There might be more actually now since 1.12 with all of the Easter eggs, but yeah, there's not an awful lot of signs of life on the planet and they're able to go all over the solar system. And I, I personally thought that's the weirdest thing about, about Kerbin anyway. So we were able to bring that last plane down successfully. I did land it in the Midlands, hoping that we were going to get some new science, but I had already unfortunately landed there with a separate mission. With that though, I figured out, yep, supersonic flight, uh, we're capable of doing that, that's absolutely fine. What we want to do now is try and work on basically a small style X-plane kind of thing. Yeah, an X-plane kind of thing. So we're gonna go for a smaller plane because I felt like it would be a bit easier to get it up to those speeds and hopefully we should be able to break the atmosphere. And I'm putting a ramp intake in there, a ram intake, I think it's called, uh, because the intakes that we've got on the side aren't gonna be enough. As we can see when we launch this, unfortunately, we have to keep the cargo bay doors open in order to get enough air to power those two engines, which is a little bit of a shame. This is only a small test flight though before moving on to the more advanced version of this plane. It's very unstable, yet again, I really can't fly is, <laughs> is the answer to, to this episode. Why am I doing a plane episode? And as we land, well, we hit the ground a little bit too hard. We flip up and we lose the engines, unfortunately. So we're gonna come back into the space plane hangar and we're gonna whack two new bigger engines, the Panther after burning turbo fans on the back, which do have an after burning function. So we should be able to get quite some speed up if we activate that. We're gonna make the tail fins a little bit bigger because, well, the stability really wasn't that great. And at a future point, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to do this, but I thought 
Well, let's also try and get out of the atmosphere. So I'm going to add a Nerva on. Here we go. We've, we've, we've got to that point of the video now. I did also, if you didn't see, add another intake at the front. So we shouldn't have that issue where we have to have the cargo bay doors open all the time because that was a little bit silly and that's probably why the plane was flying really badly before. But yeah, with that nerve on the end of the plane, hopefully with this design, I mean, it's definitely not going to be a single stage to orbit because we won't have anywhere near the amount of Delta V, but maybe we can get into space with this design, which would be pretty cool. We are able to take off quite nicely from the runway and this plane flies a lot better than any of the planes that I have designed before. So going ahead, I feel like this is definitely going to be more of the style of design that I go for. It seems to be much more stable. We activate the afterburning engines and when I was <laughs> lower in the atmosphere, well, it does wobble around and shake around and look like it is going to begin to break, which is a little bit concerning. But with a bit of speed gathered, we are going to start pitching up and try and break the atmosphere. We can see we got all to almost 850 meters per second, which is relatively fast. But unfortunately, even with that and firing up the nerve afterwards, well, that's nowhere near enough to break the atmosphere. We only get to about 35,000 meters before basically coming back down. Then what happens is we go into a few tailspins, but fortunately, Ziggy Kerman III and Hanan Kerman are able to gain control of the plane and we are able to touch down safely on this island, which is rather relieving. I, <laughs> I did not want to lose these two pilots. Hanan Kerman isn't even supposed to be on this plane. He is just the bog generic standard Kerbal that gets put into because he's the second Kerbal on my list. So that's why he was flying that vessel. Anyway, we are now coming into the vehicle assembly building because I'm going to be working on said space plane and this is going to be called the Buzzard and it's going to be a two stage style of rocket but it is going to basically be a space plane and we will re-enter Rhodes atmosphere like the space shuttle did kind of but probably nowhere near as, as realistic as the space shuttle. So here I am placing some landing legs on this because I was thinking at the time it might be kind of nice if we once we get this into orbit Maybe we could go and fly over to Armstrong with it, form a landing there, and then be able to come back to road and safely re-enter. I thought, yeah, we, we can make a space plane that lands on its, on its back. That's a good idea. Unfortunately, we are going to use nearly all of the Delta V in this to actually get to orbit in the first place. So this was a, a little bit of a silly idea. And I do go in later on and I do remove those legs because I realise, well, there's absolutely no way that we're going to be able to make a fully recoverable system and try and go to Armstrong at the same time. All this is going to be used for is crew ferry from the surface of road to low road orbit. And I do develop a cargo variant as well that will be able to take some cargo to low road orbit, but that isn't going to be in this episode. That is something that I've started working on in the next episode. Anyway, we have now named it the Buzzard. We are placing our RCS ports on because we do want some translation because it would be nice to dock this to say, the RSSI, which is the space station in low road orbit. We're going to get rid of those landing legs as well, because this was the point where I realized that's a really silly idea. We're not going to be able to do that. And with that, that is pretty much this done. We did whack it on top of a Paladin 1 first stage, which has been proven to actually be used as a recoverable booster. Yeah, I have done a few tests of that and it has worked. Anyway, with that being done, we are now ready to launch the first buzzard. And we've got Ziggy Kerman III, Hanan Kerman, and Maximos Kerman on board, a pilot, a scientist, and an engineer. I don't think I specifically picked these Kerbals. I think they are, as I've said before, just the three Kerbals at the top of my list. So they got automatically placed in. The ascent of this goes absolutely fine. We do not have anything to worry about. Once again, just using Smart ASS to try and fine tune my orbit because that is just the way that I'm liking to do this at the moment. But here is something that I have not done in a long time. I think I did this for the first time in the last Coming Home series, getting up the Rude Planetary Space Alliance multicam where we get to see the second stage, in this case, the RPSA Buzzard and the first stage booster at the same time. I might go in and redesign this overlay though because to be honest, it does look a little bit like a five-year-old has designed it. I would like it to be a little bit more clean, more professional, and I could probably spend a little bit longer on it than I did, I think, when I made it originally. It took me like 
an hour and a half to build this, but I was very bad at using Photoshop or GIMP, which is what I used back then. I have gained a little bit more knowledge in using that, so I might be able to put something together okay. Anyway, we did make it to orbit, and we did land the booster successfully, even though there was an explosion, it was just the landing legs, all of the engines survived, we only lost the landing legs, and to be honest, they're not really critically important, it's, it's fine. And now we are going to be attempting our re-entry into road. I think there I was trying to get a little bit of a shot for a, a thumbnail. Yeah, that's that's the word I was looking for, but I decided against it. I think the thumbnail that I'm going to be using is going to be something a little bit different. But this does fly rather well, and it is able to survive re-entry with the engine at the back intact as well. And we're coming in now at about 100 meters per second, which is slow enough well no even slower we are coming in we touch the ground at about 60 meters per second which is definitely slow enough for those wheels to survive that impact and that'll be it for this episode i have been karnasa and i will see you later